YouTube, welcome to Fox Boss 9. It's been a little while. I think the last video we did, we were doing some towing in one of our trucks, which uh, we're back in a home now. And uh, I had a neighbor that was talking to me about his string trimmer, and he really likes to take care of his equipment and his lawn. And he knew I was a small engine guy, that I used to work or have my own small engine shop and actually work in a couple of small engine shops. And uh, he asked me a question and I thought, you know what, there's not a lot of information on this on YouTube. Let me, let me talk about it and let you guys know what I know and uh, use that to your benefit, hopefully. We have a, a lot of debate that goes on, or I've heard a lot of debate goes on, about removing your deflector shield off your string trimmer. I personally don't believe it's a good idea. However, there's people that do it, get along just fine, and never had an issue. A string trimmer is made to operate at its top efficiency at the high RPMs. Whenever you got the trigger pulled all the way, that's when it's supposed to be its most efficient. It's putting out its most horsepower and its most torque. So if you run into the deep brush, deep grass, whatever it is you're cutting, if you've got it at full RPM, it's gonna cut the best that way. Not only that, but the engine's gonna perform better um, saving itself. Um, not only is just adding oil to the fuel uh, one way of keeping the engine lubricated and cooled, but also just the splashing of the fuel at that higher RPM, um, you know, it's a much greater rate whenever you got full throttle, that fuel's coming in and splashing on all those critical components in the engine case, the connecting rod um, at the piston, the piston skirt, um, you know, but basically the connecting rod and the crank, um, it keeps it cool. That gasoline in the tank actually going into the engine keeps it cool just based on the fact there's a temperature difference and it's a liquid splashing on it. So that's one of the things that if you're not at high RPM, that it's not going to cool as well as it would the inside of the engine. Now, talking about the cooling effect on the outside of the engine, trying to keep the heat away, there's a fan in these string trimmers. There's a fan in there that blows across the cooling fins. Well, as you can imagine, it moves the most air when it's on high. And the way the fan's on high is you've got the engine spinning at high because it's directly connected to the engine. So between those two things, um, it's a good idea to run on heavy loads and when you're working on heavy stuff, you know, going through heavy cut grass to have it on high RPM. Uh, the other thing that you gotta be concerned with is uh, the way that the clutch operates on these string trimmers. Um, there's a couple of shoes that are attached to a spring that that's attached to a plate that is attached to the output shaft of the motor. So when the motor runs, it's spinning this plate and these shoes. Those shoes, they expand when you start climbing in the RPM range and that spring starts stretching and allows those shoes to grab onto the drum, the outside of the drum or the bell that's over top of those shoes. So it's kind of like your brake shoes engaging into uh, the, the drum of a car. As you can imagine, the faster you go, the faster you spin those shoes, the more engaged and pushed up against that drum they are, which is a very good thing to keeping it locked into one-on-one. -on -one. It's basically a transmission. Um, so at a lower RPM, you could get it to where those things are just kind of dragging and they're not actually applying force to uh, the, the, the drum to where the drum can spin the mechanical part of the working tool, whatever it may be, a chainsaw or a string trimmer in this case. So what you want to do is make sure that those things stay engaged by keeping your RPM up. So whenever you do stuff that would actually affect the amount of load that is on that clutch bell, to cause it to where those shoes have a harder time to turn it, that's where you start running into issues. So there's a couple of things that happen. Uh, people put these accessories on the end of their string trimmers that uh, don't belong there. They're not engineered for it. They're not a, an official accessory. You know, as seen on TV, it's some kind of a blades. Um, you know, it's too big, it's too heavy. That could cause some problems. And also, uh, something else that can cause problems is when you take your deflector shield off, that deflector shield's there to, supposed to keep stuff off of you. But um, a lot of people trying to get the job done faster, like landscapers and that, they'll get rid of that shield. They'll, they'll take it off. Now that shield is there, so when you bump the, the, the string, you know, the head of the, the trimmer to feed more string out, um, there's a cutoff on there, and that keeps it cut to the perfect length. 
Now, what a lot of landscapers do is they get rid of the shield and they just use the string. Uh, and when it, for it sounds like it's a little short or the path is a little bit too small that they're cutting, they go ahead and bump it again. They, they just let the line wear out naturally. Um, the problem with uh, taking off that shield though is you can actually add length to the line that shouldn't be there. And of course, again, landscapers are, for the most part, are the ones that do it a lot. Um, they want to cut the biggest path possible to get the job done as fast as possible so they can get on to the next job because they're usually paid by job. And the faster they get it done, the more money they can make. Um, for homeowners, they do it because they see landscapers doing it. And they're thinking, you know what, I want to do the same thing. I want to have my sp string a little bit longer. Well, that's going to add to load. That's going to add a load to that shaft that runs through the, the arm of the, uh, the, the string trimmer, you know, that goes from the cutting head all the way up to the clutch. And it's also going to wear out the clutch, too. Uh, the clutch may not get to the speed that it should to engage those shoes as hard as it should into that bell to keep it locked in. So what am I talking about? You know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are saying, whatever, that's not going to make that much difference. Well, I know that even adding heavier string, which a lot of people do, I'm guilty of it myself. And I shouldn't even say guilty. I'm conscious of it whenever I'm working with it. I know what to do if I do add something like this to a string trimmer, what I need to do and keep an eye on. But heavier line, what I mean is, you know, they, they come in gauges. Uh, you know, you get a lot of them that are point zero whatever. Um, and everybody gets them and they're like spaghetti string. And they're like, I need something that'll cut better. So they, they buy this new, you know, square line or triangle line or octagon line or pentagon line or whatever that's got shapes to it. Well, those shapes uh, and that line is usually heavier, um, which also because of it being a weird design as far as its shape, when you're spinning it, it's harder, the air resistance on that, it's harder for the string trimmer to turn that because it's not cutting through the air as easily as a, a round string would. So that usually adds to a, a you know a depreciation in the RPM that the engine is trying to produce um, because it's taking this string that's not aerodynamic and trying to spin it through air. The other thing is, is they have a tendency to add length to the string, again, because they're wanting a bigger path. Well, that really adds to it even more. Um, so if you have a single line on your the head of your string trimmer, so you got a string trimmer that's just got one string that comes out. Um, if you add one inch, what do you think the RPM drop is at? You know, just, just out of curiosity, if you want to pause the video and put it down in the comments, say, you know, I think that one inch added to my line will drop the RPM, the maximum RPM of the string trimmer by so many RPMs. So go ahead, I'll pause for just a second. You can put it down in the, hit the, hit the pause on the video and put it down, your guess in the comments. All right, hopefully you're back now. Um, 1,000 RPM. It cuts down on the maximum end of things, 1,000 RPM. So now if you add a, a two inches, which an inch, you're only adding, you know, that's that much. So if you're adding two inches, uh, how many RPMs do you think that's going to drop? Pretty much double it it's going to be 2000 RPMs. So now you're actually dipping down into an RPM that those shoes are not really at the, the centrifugal force they should be to push up against that drum like they would if you didn't reduce that maximum RPM. Not only that, but now your machine may not be as efficient cutting through whatever you want it to cut through because it doesn't have the speed necessary to get through whatever it is you're trying to cut through. And I'm talking about the spinning speed of the string. So here's the other thing. The load that's caused on that cable because of you putting heavier string and longer string down there, um, that could possibly cause that cable to snap um, or deform or come apart. But it definitely has an effect on the shoes. And like I said, now your engine's not running as cool. Um, now you're not getting the same fan air being blown over the cooling fins to keep it cool. Um, that it's, it's slowed everything down. It's making it less efficient overall. 
Now you still might be getting away with that. Um, a lot of people do. Again, that's that's your own personal choice. If you don't mind, you know, your stuff maybe potentially wearing out faster, that's that's fine. But if you have a dual string trimmer, um, what do you think when you have a dual string trimmer and you've now added an inch of line um, to uh, each side? What, what do you think that's going to be? Obviously, you've doubled it up, but you don't double the number, believe it or not. And this is how important what I just talked about, that air drag is when you have a non-round string versus like a hex string. Because um, if you add an inch to each side, um, it drops 1,750 RPMs roughly. Uh, and the reason is, is because there's an air path being cut by two lines now instead of one. And it's just like two stock cars traveling, you know, on the track. They're sharing the the workload of the uh, cutting through the air, you know, the air resistance. They're sharing that load together. Well, it's the same with the two string trimmer lines. So if you add, let's say, two inches, you know, you know, there you go. You've got uh, a thousand, a thousand, so there's um, 2,000. And now on the other side, you've got 1,500. Um, you could get an idea now you're at 3,500 RPMs less than what it should be running at just because you decided to take that deflector shield off and add two inches of line. And that's really going to make a difference. So um, back in the day, I know the manufacturers were much more stringent about warranties. And they would instruct us that if anything came into our shop that had a deflector shield that was removed, uh, not to warranty if it had really almost any problem that was to deal with cooling, overheating, or definitely anything to do with the clutch and anything to do with the shaft if it had broke. Um, that all was being contributed based on the, again, the extra load that you're in, you know, putting on that, mo that uh, string trimmer. Even people, what they would do is they take the trail shield off, they'd use it, and then when it broke, they'd put the shield back on. So they'd, they'd bring it into the shop, and here it's got a brand new shield on it, yet it's, you know, everything else is dirty. Well, we knew what was going on there. We call that ATF. That's after the fact. That's not automatic transmission fluid. It's something that people do with engines too. After they blow them up, uh, if they're under warranty, they'll put oil in there and then they bring it in and say, no, check the oil. It's full. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure it is full, but you can see it's also clean and it's marbleized. That's because it's ATF. And then they would get upset and say, I didn't put transmission fluid in there. That's oil. And then I would tell them, no, I'm talking about after the fact oil. You put it in after you blew up the engine. We can tell that stuff. We have to be able to tell that stuff, um, especially when it comes to the manufacturers, because we have to prove to the manufacturer something they did failed the device, not the user. So the other thing is, is if you leave the trail shield off, we can see on the aluminum, You, I mean, I don't care how well you clean it, you can see all the nicks and scratches on the arm of the, uh, you know, the downward arm, the shaft, the outer shaft, uh, that it's being hit by all kinds of grass and debris real low where it shouldn't be if you had a deflector shield on there. So I just wanted to let you guys know that if you decide to do that, if you want to look like a pro, um, go ahead, take your trail shield off, go out there and do what you want, and you may never have a problem, but you are hurting your machine to some extent. It's not designed to do that. Um, if you want to do that, make sure that you have a shop that has a very liberal warranty procedure um, that you can go in and say, listen, I have a problem and hopefully they don't look at any of that. But it is a concern. And, um, you know, some of these string trimmers for guys that are professionals that want to keep them for a period of time, you know, they're expensive. So I hope I did some sort of a service on this. You can get in the comments and argue about it all you want. I'm fine with that. I'm not going to pay attention to it myself. That's not my thing. I'm going to go in and look at your guys' guesses about the RPMs if you, uh, you didn't uh, do that. 
<laughs> I'm kind of curious what people think uh, because I was kind of shocked about that myself back in the day, like I said, almost two decades ago that I was told that. And I thought that that would be uh, something that I should share. So I don't have my neighbor asking me what uh, I think about it. Um, you now can tell uh, your friends and know your, for yourself, which is awesome. So thanks for checking out Fox Boss 9 and uh, keep an eye out. We might have some more stuff for you shortly.